aren't you thankful for his mercy? If you have your Bibles, if you go ahead and turn over to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. I want to share with you <clears throat> just a few thoughts this morning because we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper in just a few moments. Best of my recollection, it's been over one year. Due to COVID, due to the circumstances, but we come this morning. It all goes back to the Passover celebration when God's people were in bondage. Kind of reminds me of my own personal life because there was a time when I was in bondage to sin and so were you. And maybe that's where you're at today, in bondage to sin. I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't free myself. I couldn't deliver myself. And neither can you. What happened in Egypt? God had sent some, performed some miracles. And in the 10th miracle, there was a final plague. And he would send a destroyer, an angel of death, if you please, who would kill all the firstborn throughout the land. Judgment upon Egypt. God's people were instructed to, to take a hyssop. A hyssop was a, a brushy plant. Uh, you could take a, the plant and it would just work like a brush. And they would take that and dip it in the blood of the lamb and they'd put it on the posts of their home. And when the death angel would come, he would see the blood had been applied to the posts and would pass by. What a beautiful picture of how God works. But then, there was another one that came. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God without spot, without blemish. The Lamb who was tempted in every way as you and I, yet without sin. The Lamb who willingly died upon the cross and shed His precious blood. No one killed Jesus. He laid down his life willingly. All he had to do was speak the word. That's all. But because he loved you and I so much, he willingly died on the cross. He shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary. And then through that glorious resurrection provided a means through which you and I could enter into a relationship with him and have eternal life. Aren't you thankful? As I think and reflect upon my own life, that one of these days when my heart stops beating and I stand before the, a holy God no one will be standing with me. No one will be standing with you. And when I stand in before him, and the books will be open one day, and praise God, and when he looks down, the only thing that he's going to see is the precious blood of Jesus. I don't see any sin because I have been redeemed by his precious blood. I wonder this morning, have you had that experience? Do you know for certain, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if your heart stopped beating this morning, where you would spend eternity? I'm not talking about, well, I hope so, or, or maybe so, or, uh, well, I was baptized into the life of the church years ago, or, you know, you know it, I was real little, but, but, you know, I just really don't know. And No, I'm talking about beyond a shadow of a doubt, that blessed assurance that one of these days when your heart starts beating, you know that you know where you're going to spend eternity. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior? That's what we're talking about this morning. 
Oh, that spiritual cleansing that only he can bring to our hearts and our lives. It can't come any other way. He is the only one that can bring it about. And in the Lord's Supper, we are reminded how he gave his body upon the cross. We're reminded through the cup how he shed his precious blood, the blood that covers our sins. As we remember and reflect upon that, we're reminded of who we are. My friend, you're not your own anymore if you're a Christian. You have been bought with a price. And that price is the precious blood of Jesus. We are to be followers. We're to be his disciples. We are to trust him in absolutely all things. But we should never, ever take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. As a matter of fact, we are called to examine our hearts, to examine our lives. There was a problem at the church of Corinth. Paul made it very clear. They were using it as an occasion to, for gluttony, and they were even those who, who were getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11.30, that's why some of you are weak and ill and why some of you have literally died. God takes this so serious. We cannot take it any less. And as often as we share in the Lord's Supper, we're proclaiming his death, burial, and resurrection. And it calls us to examine our hearts and our lives. And so I would simply challenge you this morning, if there's any unconfessed sin in your life, anything at all that you know of, so that your heart is not lined up with his heart, that you can come and participate and share with a clean heart. It doesn't mean that we're perfect, but it does mean our hearts are lined up with his. Oh, if you can't do that this morning, I hope and pray that you will find in your heart that the Holy Spirit will touch you in such a way that you'll have a desire to come and to do that this morning. The altar is always open. You can come anytime you want to come. And we're going to have an invitation in just a moment. We want to give you an opportunity to do that. But first, would you stand with me and honor the reading of God's Word? In John chapter 14, I'm going to start at verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has sent me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Now I love this verse. Most assuredly, <laughs> I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Open our hearts and minds to be receptive. May your Holy Spirit have full reign, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. When we come to the Lord's Supper, there's some things we need to remember. First of all, we need to remember his person. Jesus had just spent about three years with the disciples and gave a whole new meaning in sharing the Passover as they gathered in the upper room. And, and all of a sudden, Philip comes out and says, but, but, but Lord, we, we need proof. We need proof. And Jesus said, do you still not know me after all of this time? Let me ask you all something. I got your attention. 
How many of you know my name? Well, most of you do. That's interesting. I've just been here almost two years. <laughs> been filling the pulpit now for almost nine months. All right, those of you that know my name, let me ask you something else. How many of you really know me? Thank you. God bless you. I'll give you a hug later, both of you. Yeah, my wife. I mean, so <laughs> After 47 years, I hope so. Did you hear what you just said? You don't know me. You know my name, but you don't know me. How can I? How can the disciples literally be with Jesus for three years, day and night, watching everything that he does and not know him? Is it possible that we can read the Bible and we know about Jesus but we really don't know him. The only way that you'll ever get to know me and know my heart, besides asking my wife, is to spend time with me. Just to sit down and talk to me. And let me talk with you. I want to get to know you. And I hope you want to get to know me. So that it's not just some kind of casual relationship, but something that's much, much deeper. I, I hate to tell you this, but if you hadn't figured it out yet, we are brothers and sisters in Christ if you know Jesus. You're my brother. You're my sister. That relationship ought to be closer than our physical relationship. Well, why? Because that physical relationship is temporary. What I'm talking about is eternal. They didn't know him. Where was the faith? Where was the faith? And then even after all that time, one Judas, he walked away for 30 pieces of silver. Gave it all up. I wonder for those today, because sometimes when I'm reading articles, I read about those. Matter of fact, I read about two very prominent individuals who were very deeply and very influential in ministry who all of a sudden have come out and said in the last month, you know, I, I no longer claim to be a Christian. Can you imagine? I no longer claim to be a Christian. God help us today. Here's what I want you to see. You and I can never be pleasing to God without faith. And every time we share in the Lord's Supper, it's a reminder that we are to live each and every single day of our life by faith, putting our trust in Him, getting to know Him, not just simply know about Him, and to walk in faith each and every day of our lives to trust the fact that he is the source of our sufficiency in all things. And then second, we need to remember his power. Oh, I love that verse 12. Greater things you will do than I. He healed the sick. He caused the lame to walk. Caused the blind to see. Three people he raised from the dead. And Jesus looks at the disciples, and it's a word to you and I, and he is saying, you're going to do greater things, than works than I have done. And he's right. Let me tell you what that's all about. The ones that he healed, that the ones that received their sight, the ones that were lame, the ones that were even raised from the dead. Think about it. It was all physical with a spiritual emphasis, and every single one of them died. What?
what is the greater works that we do? The greater works that we do, folks, is the message of salvation that we take to others. Because it's not temporary, it is eternal. That is the greater works. To tell somebody about Jesus. And when they receive them into their heart and life just like this beautiful Linda Grace did. Is she a beautiful young lady? Amen. That's the greater works. That's the greater works. So I wonder this morning, as you examine your heart and examine your life, are you where you need to be? Do you know him? I'm not talking about just know about him. Do you know him? Would you be willing to come this morning, maybe just to pray and say, God, I really don't know you. I know your name. I've read some scripture. I, I, I know a few things that you've done, but I, I want to make a, I want to just simply right now make a covenant with you that from, I'm going to get to know you. Maybe you'd say there's some things in my life that shouldn't be there. I don't want to take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. Who's the Lord's Supper for? Every single born-again believer. Has nothing to do with membership. I'm going to let you all in on another secret. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be any church membership. We're just simply going to be there as his children for all eternity gathered together. So if you're a born-again believer, we want you to participate as God leads you in taking of the Lord's Supper. But first, let's all stand. I wonder this morning, maybe there's someone here. You need to do some business with the Lord. There's some things in your life you need to take care of. Would you come this morning? We'll have a, a deacon here on each side. Maybe you're wanting to join the church. They'll be glad to help you. Maybe you've asked Jesus into your heart and life and you want to share this morning. You come on. You come on. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. It's your invitation. Lead us and guide us, Father. May your will be done, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You come. Right now. Don't wait.